is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. All righty, all righty. Welcome aboard. <laughs> How you doing, brother? <laughs> uh, let's see. Friday, I'm driving to Orlando to go see Dirty Honey. Uh-huh. Phone call. The wife says, yeah, you know that stomach ache I had? Well, it's an exploding ulcer. Holy cow. Well, I'm, I'm already like, you know, a third of the way to Orlando. She was going to go, but she didn't feel well. So then, you know, I, I had, so I got a race back, right? And thank you to Baptist Health who is a proud sponsor of our show. She's at Baptist Health right now. She'll have her uh, operation on Monday. So she was like the exorcist, spitting out blood, all that. So I've been in the hospital the entire time. I just got out because oh, my brother. daughter went and kind of relieved me, you know. So I came home, watched the game. And so I'm scrambling, trying to put this whole show together and all that. And you're telling me now. And I'm like, oh, no. I know, man. I apologize. I apologize. But I so, yeah. my, so, you know, I just want you to know, it's like, there's a lot of shit going on with me, right? And I'm running it all by myself because Sean isn't here, you know? So it's yeah, like, yeah. you know, and if you guys, can you tell the lead up into the show how like effed up it was? And I, I, I was opening up the cameras, many knows, and it was like, there was a frozen still picture. And I'm like, where am I? And I had to go then reset the camera. And all, I mean, it just, whatever could happen has happened but we, we are blessed everything is uh everything is fine but damn damn all right well, so they eked one out dude and yeah. look in the end that's all you want to do you want to win but it's um it, it's i think we walk away with the tbd concerns now yeah. uh, is it injury is it confidence is it both um you know what is going on with tyler van dyke i think Great question. I really don't have an answer for you. I think, you know, certainly I, I talked about it right after the North Carolina game that he got hit really, really hard in that game. Got hit in the knee, in his right knee. Obviously, today we saw him with the brace on the right knee during the game. Um, I know that he obviously got hit in the ribs as well. He doesn't look to me like a guy who is is anywhere near 100%. And, and look, a lot of quarterbacks aren't. A lot of guys play bad. But think about Joe Burrow earlier this year. Right. We know Joe Burrow to be one of the best uh, NFL passers, but he was clearly playing injured. I think today we saw Tyler Van Dyke clearly playing injured and and and, in a, and, and nowhere close to 100 percent. So to me, that's what I'm going to chalk it up to. And I'm going to say he's still the best quarterback on this team. And I don't know that Miami wins today, even with Emory Williams at quarterback. Well, see, the problem is you don't know. It's the unanswered yeah. question. You know right. what I'm saying? So. If you go to him, does he explode on, implode on you, and it's over, or does he become a phenom? And right. then, you know, and then, so it's kind of, do you put him in that position too? You know right. what I mean? Now, we've seen Kozar, we've seen Ken Dorsey, we've seen a couple of young guys that have been put in that position and have succeeded. Yes, I'm old. Yes, I watch Kozar. Yes, and so. <laughs> You know, but I'm just saying it, it, it's happened in the past, but it's a rolling of the dice because yeah. you just don't know how the young guy's going to, you know, hold up. And then all of a sudden he's, you know, uh, Frank Costa and, you know, it's just uh, struggling out there. Yeah, listen, and, and it's a roll of the dice to go with an injured starting quarterback anyway, right? And clearly TVD is not 100%. And, and so Mario made a decision and he ultimately went with the older guy because that's who makes him feel most comfortable. But. I know this. Uh, they got the win, and and ultimately, oh, that's the hardest thing to do these days, unless you're Georgia, yep. which which I just saw them completely dismantle Florida here. Uh, you know, it, to me, unless you're an elite program, the Michigan of these worlds, you're going to fight on a lot of Saturdays for wins, and that's what the season has been for the most part for Miami. They, it really hasn't been that easy uh, since they got back from Temple. Yeah. No. And listen, uh, in the end, you know that that first interception from Tyler Van Dyke. That's the one to me that his injury showed because it yeah. looked at like a player that said, okay, I can't get it there. It's much on that throw and it gets there and it didn't get there. And I think yeah. that that was, you know, the, uh, there was another, you know, the other interceptions, the guys weren't open. Those no. were bad. The other interception was bad. Interception. 
I and, think, and, and he almost threw – he really should have thrown a third one. They just dropped it. Yeah. Um, this is why you got to win like a team, right? And, and this is why you have a running game, why you have an offensive line. This is why you have a kicker. Uh, some days you need those guys to come through, and that's what they needed today. They needed guys like Mark Fletcher, who, who just came back from the injured list, uh, to run the ball as hard as he did there in overtime. They needed an A.J. Allen to show some of that athleticism. That was Hurl, nice. Hurling over guys. Look, in the end, it wasn't the greatest game plan either, I think. Uh, like you said, taking those shots down the field, I think they would have been better suited by not doing that and, and maybe limiting, you know, sort of the, the shots down the field. But, look, they won the game. And, uh, like I said, sometimes you win ugly. This is better, certainly, than the feeling that they had against Georgia Tech where uh, – where he really knew they, they shit the bed in that game. Well, no, they found a way to win the game, at least. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and Virginia just beat North Carolina. So we all know it's it's not an easy, you know, nut to crack. And in the end, you, you look with the what your strength is yep. to close out the game. Yep. You know, at that point, that's what you had to depend on. I don't, I don't know what you do. Absolutely. And, and look, the, the offensive line, I think, did their job for the most part. I know Virginia got to Van Dyke a couple of times, but when they needed to run the ball in the important moments late in the game, they were able to do that. They were able to give Tyler some time um, and, and he was able to find guys when they needed the field goal to, you know, to sort of match it. Uh, and the defense to me, the, the defense is really the story here because uh, yeah. six sacks today, uh, our boy Ruben He's Bain had two of them, you know, um, those guys are making plays, and, and when they need stops, they're coming through. And I, look, I know Virginia's not an elite offense, but they just beat North Carolina. So you got to give them some credit and say that uh, Tony Elliott's team has some guys that can make plays. I don't think their quarterback is that bad, uh, the no. musket kid. He makes plays with those with his legs, and you know that, those running backs are pretty good. So I know in the end we're going to say, oh, man, 2-6 and six Virginia. You shouldn't struggle against guys like that. But I think you and I and everybody else who, who follow the ACC know a little bit better. Oh, can we be honest? Virginia's better coach than Miami. Yeah, in a lot of ways, you could certainly say that. To be able to squeeze what they can out of that team with with far less talent, you got to give them credit. Yeah, I mean, they beat North Carolina, a team Miami couldn't beat with an elite quarterback in, in college football. They beat them. So for me, uh, you know, the, my, you know, one of my problems that I tweeted out during the thing is. For one week, I'd like to look at Mario and say that's the better staff on the yeah. field. And I, I I see a recruiter that's going to have to just win on talent. And and look, let's face it. The guys who made a lot of the plays today, Mark Fletcher, Ruben Bain, those are guys he brought in, right? I mean, it, it's yeah. you got to trust you got to trust the process. The more more guys that he stacks like that in the next couple of classes, you're going to be able to win games just on talent alone. And I and I and you know what? You couldn't really say that the last few years. You really couldn't. You know, no. you needed to you needed to out scheme teams, and even then they weren't out scheming teams, which is why a guy like Mario's here because you do. If you're gonna have any shot of, of of climbing the elite ladder, at some point or another, you know, coaching's gonna matter. But you got to start with talent, and, and at least the talent that Mario's brought in is actually doing something. They won already, so they did the right thing. But yep. what did you what did you think with the with the thirty seconds left and three timeouts that they capitulated and, and took the knee? What you think? Had no pro had no problem. You're at your own twenty yard line and, and Tyler is beat up and not throwing the ball well. So to me, I that I that I can agree with a lot more than I could a week ago when you're at the forty yard line and the freshman has already thrown a couple of successful deep passes and you haven't given up a sack. You've put, your offensive right. line is playing great. So. To me, I would have liked to have seen them take a shot down the field in that game. But this one, I completely understand why you didn't. You're at your own 20. You don't want to make a mistake. You fought hard to get back in the game, and your quarterback is messed up. So don't do it. Yeah, and be prepared, Kings fans. That may be the habitual decision. hundred <laughs> percent. No, no matter uh -huh. who's the quarterback, no matter how hot they are, how cold they are, how young they are, how old they are, how tall they are, how short they are. It don't matter. 100%. That might be the decision 99 out of 100 times. 1,000%. A 1,000%. Thousand percent, oh. a thousand percent. Oh, yeah. All right, what do you got going on in the athletics so folks can check you out? Well, man, listen, I'm up here in Jacksonville, obviously, covering the Florida-Georgia game, so I'll be writing off of this today. And, you know, for Miami fans who say, oh, screw the Gators, I don't care about them, uh, I will tell you the Gators are on the schedule next year, right? So, uh, yeah. you know. It's important for me to get a look at these guys, and I saw them against the best team in college football in Georgia. 
So to me, uh, I got a good gauge of really where their talent is and how far they have to go. So I'll be writing about them for tomorrow, but I will have plenty of Canes coverage in the days ahead. I will be writing uh, a follow-up off of this game today against Virginia, probably for Monday or Tuesday. So, uh, And then, of course, the podcast, the Wide Ride podcast. I'll have more stuff coming up there as I review the game. So uh, if, you, if you want Canes coverage, it will be there. Today, though, I had a special assignment, so I'm up here for that. Good stuff as always. Manny, I appreciate you, my brother. We'll catch up uh, during the week. All right, brother. Take care. See you. Yes, sir. There you go, Manny tomorrow as always. Getting it done for us. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.